everybody, and welcome back to another Wheel of Time news video. I know it seems like it's been the case a lot lately, and that's a good thing, by the way, but we have even more Wheel of Time TV show news to talk about. We've got a possible release date for the show, information on season two, including an episode title, new cast members, and a very juicy Q&A about the show from Wheel of Time showrunner Rafe Judkins. There is an absolute ton to get to. First though, make sure you smash the like button on the video to appease the light and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release all kinds of new Wheel of Time TV show news, as well as lore news about the book and the TV show when it comes out. Thank you to the video sponsor, NordVPN, but we will talk more about them in a moment. Let me go ahead and throw up a spoiler warning for the video. Today's video is going to carry a spoiler rating of red, with major spoilers running all the way through The Great Hunt, the second book in the series. If you have not read at least up to The Great Hunt, watch this video with caution. I shouldn't be saying anything too absolutely groundbreaking, but if you don't want any spoilers, you have been warned. All right, so let's jump right on into the news by talking about a new cast member. My good friend Rob Christensen from Weekly Wheel News discovered an actor by the name of Mark Fletcher that has been cast as the lead warder for episode 5 of the show, which is titled Blood Calls Blood. Now Mark Fletcher has been acting since the 1980s. He's known for a role he played in a short film called God is Dead. It doesn't appear that this is a really large role given that he is not even a named character outside of being referred to as the lead warder, but I think it's worth mentioning mainly for what it implies about the plot. For one, if he's playing a warder, that implies a large Aes Sedai presence in episode five. And if the title of the episode is anything to go by, it implies Aes Sedai at Faldara in episode five. Now in the books, Blood Calls Blood is chapter seven in The Great Hunt. And in that chapter, Padan Fain has just escaped from the dungeon in Faldara. And Varen Mathwin describes to the Amarlin the dark prophecy that was written on the walls of the dungeon. This is also the chapter that Varen successfully guesses that one of the boys is the Dragon Reborn. Now, just because the chapter titles match up does not mean that this episode in the series will be about Faldara scenes or that it will even involve Varen or other Aes Sedai but the presence of lead warder would seem to add some credence to that theory. Now, what I do not think that it means is that the entirety of The Great Hunt will make it into season one of the show. I think we may see some pieces of the second book in the first season. I don't envision it will actually be that much though. Now again, this news comes courtesy of Rob Christensen of the Weekly Wheel News, which is an absolutely hilarious fake news publication about the Wheel of Time, sort of like a tabloid or the onion. Now, if you've never seen it, he uses digital graphics to make fake newspaper front pages or fake magazine front pages about the events of Randland. You can find the Weekly Wheel News on thegreatblight.com on the main page, as Rob will post it there, and you can see all of his older editions as well. They're really great. Make sure to check it out. Follow his Patreon and support what he does. Now, let's go ahead and move on to the next piece of news, and that's really just confirmation of something that we already knew. According to showrunner Rafe Judkins, the first season of The Wheel of Time has officially wrapped filming, and they are now working on some post-production work. Now, we had previously heard that filming was over, but we did not have an official confirmation on from Amazon. Now we do. According to WattSeries.com and an amazing article by my friend Sarah, there are some indications now about the release date for the show. Now, they have received a tip from a major book publisher that is planning a new edition of The Wheel of Time that will be releasing in the holiday season, between November and December. Now this is typically done when a show is releasing as they're gonna release new book covers in conjunction with that show release. Now this combined with some rumors that we've heard, that I've heard, that surround release dates indicating a Black Friday release, which for those of you that are non-US viewers, that is the day after Thanksgiving here and it's the biggest shopping day of the year and it's a time when a lot of families are together. Sometimes shows do release around that time. So basically that would be a November 26th release date or sometime around then. Now in her article, Sarah also looks through some of the past trailer release dates and then the actual release dates for the show on Amazon. And basically the November 26th release date would make some sense with a supposed June release date for a full trailer, which has been the rumor. Now I'm gonna have her article linked in the description of this video, it is fantastic, you should read it. So in addition to season one wrapping, we also got some more official confirmations of stuff that we sort of knew already, but this time it came in the form of an official announcement that the show had been picked up for a second season by Amazon. Now this is really cool if you think about it, as the show has not even been released yet, and Amazon already believes in it enough that they are filming season two and spending an absolutely obscene amount of money on it. 
So to correspond with the announcement of season two being picked up, the Wheel of Time Twitter handle released a picture of the script from the first episode of season two. Now there was some funny business here as the Wheel of Time Twitter handle manager, known affectionately as the Tweeter of Chaos, accidentally released the picture a day early and then very promptly took it down, but not before Twitter of Time was able to screen cap that tweet. Now, this appears to be an accident as they then released the script again the next day to correspond with Rafe Judkins Q&A, which we'll talk about in a minute, but here's the picture. Now, it's a picture of the script and it indicates the name of the first episode of season two being called A Taste of Solitude. And it was written by season one writer, Amanda Kate Schumann. So let's talk about that title. Taste of Solitude is a chapter from Lord of Chaos, the sixth book of the series. So guys, you have heard it here. It is officially confirmed. They are going to be doing books one through five in season one of the show. Okay, all joking aside, they are obviously not following the chapter titles exactly here, which could be an indication for everybody who thinks that they are doing that with the season one chapter titles. Just because we have chapter titles from The Great Hunt does not necessarily mean that season one is gonna be spending tons of time in The Great Hunt. And without going into spoilers for Lord of Chaos, I can say with almost complete certainty that we will not be seeing the events of that specific chapter playing out on season two of the show. So what then could this episode be about? Well, if I had my guess, my thoughts would be about one of two things. First, it could be Egwene's captivity by the Sean Chan. Solitude is certainly one way of describing that captivity. The other thing it could be referring to is the aftermath of Rand being able to channel. Now, if you remember from The Great Hunt, Perrin and Matt sort of stay away from Rand after he kind of pushes them away because he can channel, he doesn't want to hurt them. They get pissy and then they leave. So basically he's in solitude. So that could mean him being by himself or him being in the Portal Stone world, for instance. That's another place where there's some solitude. There are obviously many possibilities for what this could mean. I am curious what you all think it could be referring to. Let me know in the comments of the video. So before we get to the main event here with Rafe's Q&A, let me quickly talk about VPNs. Now, obviously NordVPN is a sponsor of the channel, but for those of you who are not sure what a VPN is or why you should have one, let me say this. A VPN is basically like a buffer between you and your internet service provider, or also businesses that track your use or hackers. VPNs are extremely important for safety on the internet as they don't allow other entities to track what you're doing and where you're going on the internet. This can protect you from people trying to steal your information or your identity or keep apps like Facebook from tracking every single thing you do. Additionally, you can watch streaming services from other countries by logging into your VPN. You want to watch European Netflix because they have stuff there that we don't where you're at? Well, just log in from your VPN and you'll be able to watch it. VPNs are super cheap and it's sort of a necessity in my opinion if you are a user of the internet, which you are because you're watching this. The good news is, is that you can get it even cheaper than normal. Just click the link in the description of the video and get NordVPN for barely anything. You will be safe with your browsing. You will support the channel. Make sure to check it out. Now, let's get back to the video. So the main event here with the news is another Q&A from Wheel of Time showrunner Rafe Judkins. He did this one on Instagram and it was really just in general. It wasn't about a specific topic. He said, ask me anything. And so he did. People asked him 22 separate questions and he had some very revealing answers and some of them he sort of dodged. Now I'm going to break them all down and I will give you my thoughts on each one of his answers. So let's go ahead and kick it off with the first question. Rafe was asked, what is the average running time of each episode? He answered, Amazon is great because each episode doesn't have to hit an exact time like you do with a network TV show. All of these episodes are epic, and so we're clocking in between 50 and 65 minutes each. Now I love this answer because we're gonna get some really long episodes. The more Wheel of Time I can get, the better. Now this isn't really anything revolutionary as many of these types of dramas or fantasy shows fall into that time range. But nevertheless, I'm very happy to hear it. It is also kind of telling that Rafe knows the lengths. Maybe I'm looking into this a little much, but maybe they're farther along in the post-production than we thought. So then Rafe was asked, congratulations on the season one wrap. Blink twice if a trailer is coming soon. And Rafe just gives a surprised face. So this pretty much is a non-answer from Rafe, but I would say that we are probably due a trailer here soon and he knows it. Then Rafe was asked, the, do the Emmonsfield five actors perform stunts on their own or do they have stunt doubles? 
Everyone on this show has a stunt double, but most of our actors are really amazing with all the physical stuff and doing their own stunts. I am the only one who's always falling. Now, I'm not sure that this tells us much of anything, but I do think it's really cool when actors do their own stunts. I also like the fact that they actually have stunts to do. That means there's action in the show. So it is what it is. So then Rafe was asked, how are you feeling about having wrapped season one? To be totally honest, it hasn't fully hit me yet. There is still so much to be done to get the show ready to air and to get season two shooting. That while I was drinking my celebratory champagne on set, after the last shot Tuesday, someone grabbed me to tackle three new problems that had come up and I had to leave. Ha. Now this is just basically a glimpse into Rafe's psyche about the show. Filming being complete does not mean it's the end of his work. In fact, he's got a lot more to do. He's going to be very, very busy for the next year or so, finishing the post for season one, working on season two, and then basically working on season two all the way through next year, because he's got post-production on that too. So then Rafe was asked, what character that didn't appear in season one and does appear in season two are you the most excited about? And he answered, starts with an E-L. So I think this to most people is going to apply, imply Elaine Tricand, but I think Rafe is actually being funny here with the E-L because that could also certainly be Elida as well. Now, either way, I am certainly excited to see both of those characters and I'm hoping that we get both in season two. Now, this does seem to confirm though what we heard from Recapped a week ago and that news was is that Elaine will not be in season one of the show. So Rafe was asked, do you have the plot of all of the seasons roughly mapped out? And he answered, yeah, between season one and season two, we made a rough map of how the series could break down into seasons. It can always change, obviously, but it's important to know where we are going and how we are getting there. So we build it right if Amazon Prime Video keeps us around for the long haul. Smiley face. So I really like this statement from Rafe, and I'm reading into things a little bit here, but I think if Amazon picked up season two of the show, they really liked what they saw in season one. Getting season two picked up gave them confidence to plan out the whole series as a whole. What I like about this approach is it allows them to do more foreshadowing. One of the strengths of the books, in my opinion, is the amount of foreshadowing that Robert Jordan did, and the little small hints that of what to come that were dropped throughout. Doing planning like this allows them to kind of do the same thing with the TV show, which is certainly something I am looking forward to. Question. Will we see the actual weaves or just the end result of channeling? And he answered, you're going to see it if you're a woman who can channel. So this is sort of what I was hoping to see. Basically, in other words, Rafe is saying that the only characters that are going to be able to see the weaves are if they are also a woman who can channel. So some of you may be wondering how they could pull this off, and it's really actually an easy answer. They're going to do it with perspective. Camera angles can imply certain characters' point of views, which will mean that we will see channeling and weaves sometimes, and then other times we will just see the result of the weaves. This actually answers a question a lot of us have been asking about the way they're going to portray channeling, so I love that he answered this. So he was asked, most difficult part of creating the Wheel of Time during a global pandemic? And he answered the human aspect. We've built a family here in Prague with the cast and crew, and keeping everyone safe has been top priority. Everyone's ability to adapt and meet the stresses of a time like this has been amazing to watch. So I think it will be lost on people years from now that this season was essentially created during a global pandemic. They had two separate work stoppages due to COVID. They were forced to film months apart. They had to do post-production work from different locations on the planet. Uh, and they did not even have a really regular schedule. Everyone needed to be flexible with timing. I'm sure it took a toll on the people working on the project. So I'm, I definitely see what Rafe is saying here about the people element. How far should we get into the books if we don't want season one to spoil things for us? Rafe answered, this question was so cleverly worded to trick me that I have to respond to it out of sheer respect. Uh, well, that was worth a try. Good effort. Uh, Rafe really didn't respond, though. So then he was asked, how are you balancing the numerous point of views in the book versus focusing on Rand? And he answered, as I've always said, we are adapting the whole series, not just the eye of the world. And I really think this is an ensemble series. So the first season is as well. Now, for those of you that don't remember, all but a very few chapters in the Eye of the World are written from Rand's perspective. So from the beginning of the series, we don't really see the points of view from many other characters other than Rand. So Rafe is basically saying here that the first season will certainly not be told only from Rand's perspective, something that I'm actually very happy about. I think that it will make far better television if we get to see the ensemble cast really shine and we get to move around to different locations and establish the world building. Will we see Forsaken in season one? Rafe answered, some people see Forsaken everywhere. So this is basically another non-answer from Rafe. 
We don't currently have any announced or leaked castings that indicate Aganor, Balthamo, or Ashamael have been cast. But that does not mean that they haven't been. They would have had a, very, a fairly small role in this season of the show anyway, so it's possible that somebody snuck in and filmed those scenes without anybody picking up on it, and Amazon kept it quiet. I also think it's very possible that they won't even be in the first season, and they're saving the Forsaken for later seasons, and they'll just make Murdral the bad guys, or Pot on Fane. Again, Rafe didn't really answer the question completely, so we don't know. How would you guys feel if the Forsaken didn't make it into the first season of the show? I am curious about that. Let me know in the comments. Will we see Narg? Yep. So I'm sure fans are going to love the fact that everybody's favorite Trolloc, Narg, will be making an appearance in the show. No confirmation, though, if Narg is smart and if he will be talking or not. I hope that's how they tell us who Narg is, although that will look kind of cheesy if you have a Trolloc talking. I don't know. Question, did any of the actors end up becoming fans of the book series after getting cast? And he answered, I'm not going to spoil who, but two of the core cast are in a read-off right now, and I think one of them may have finished the series. So I think this is really cool, honestly, because if some of you may remember, most of them had not read the series at all before being cast. It sounds as though they are hooked if they binged an entire 15-book series in the span of a year and a half. The books are really good, what can we say? So question, how many brands or Trollocs did you create for the show? We leaned into the books and tried to have the Trollocs have as much individual character as possible. My favorite one we call Betty. So this actually answers a question that we had from last week's video where we saw the Trolloc. That particular Trolloc looked a lot like a Minotaur, and I was curious if there would be a variety in the Trollocs. It appears Rafe is confirming that there will be, which is something I love. I am very curious to see what Betty looks like now. Question, will season two take us to a lot of new locations? How big can the world get? He answered, the best thing about the Wheel of Time is the world keeps getting bigger and deeper. We've got to deliver that in the show. So I like that they're going to be gradually scaling up the production to more locations. We already have rumors about Morocco being a major season two filming location, following in the footsteps of shows like Game of Thrones that added more and more locations as the seasons passed. So I certainly like that. Question, please ask Amazon Prime if they would do a sweepstakes for a fan to be an extra on the show. Rafe answered, at Amazon Prime video, at the Wheel of Time. Basically just send it to them. So let me know in the comments if you would like to be an extra in the show. If you had to pay for a flight to go over to Prague, would you do it just to be an extra? Let me know in the comments. Question, I love the first look at the Trollocs. When are we getting more? Rafe answered, sadly, there hasn't been a first look at Trollocs yet. That was some accidentally leaked raw footage. We work hard to make the show. It's always a shame when you guys see stuff outside of the way we have it planned. I'll tell you one thing. When I met with the directors for season two who had seen the pilot, they all had one thing to say. Those Trollocs. So this comment actually addresses quite a few of the questions people had about the Trolloc that we saw in the leaked footage Amazon released. Basically, Rafe is saying that this was raw footage and it had not been completed through post-production. So any of you who did not really like the way the Trolloc looked, understand that that is probably not finished. There was probably more CGI to be added. So it's raw footage. One thing that was confirmed here, though, is most of us probably already knew this, is that we will be seeing Trollocs in the pilot. So basically, that's really cool. Question. Excited to progressively spiral downwards into raving madness. Rafe answered, it's so funny that you think I'm not already there. So it's just a funny quip from Rafe here, and it sort of implies how busy and crazy his life has been over the past few months, and what it's going to be like for the foreseeable future. Are you planning a book per season, or are, are there adaptations and inclusions from multiple? And Rafe answered, we have to combine. Madeline Madden and Yosha Stradowski would be 45 when we finish otherwise. Again, something most of us probably assumed was happening, but they are combining some of the books together into for individual seasons. One of the many reasons for this, obviously, is that they can't drag it out to, for 15 years because of the ages of the performers, so they're going to have to combine some. I think everybody knew that, at least anybody who was paying attention. Question, will Land's cool cloak be featured in the show? And Rafe answered, I love Land's cloak in the show, but much like I said I agelessness, if there's an effect that's going to cost us a fortune every time a character is on screen, it's a bad use of our money. Unless you want to see all of season one in the Winespring Inn, then you can have your color changing cloaks. So Rafe is basically confirming here that they will not be doing the color shifting water cloaks or ageless faces, something that many of us had predicted. It's simply a waste of the CGI budget, according to Rafe. 
Making those things look believable and consistent would require a large part of that budget. And I would, I personally would rather than put that into other areas like sets, actors, or CGI for channeling. Now, this personally won't bother me at all, as I think both of those things don't change the story much. And there are other ways that you can identify Aes Sedai or warders other than their faces or cloaks. I am curious to know what you guys think, though. Let me know in the comments of the video, is that going to be a big deal for you that there won't be a cloak? Question, who has been the hardest character to write so far? Heron is the hardest. His interior monologue in the book is the biggest part of his character, so bringing him out in the show is always something we have to build really consciously. Luckily, Marcus Rutta exudes Perrin every minute, so it makes our lives a lot easier. So I can see this actually being one of the big challenges for adapting the Wheel of Time from book to screen. So much of the writing in the book is internal monologue, and they have to be very specific in how they show this. Perrin is a character with a large internal monologue, so... I see completely how that particular character could be tough. I do agree, though, from what I've seen of Marcus in his other work. He is going to nail this. He was one of the cast members I was the most excited about, just kind of having seen his other stuff. He really does pull off that parent vibe, and I bet you he's even better than I think he is. Question, have you started writing season two? Yeah, the awesome season two writers have been working throughout the year, and we already have a bunch of great scripts ready to go. So this, again, is confirmation for what we already knew. It sounds as though the scripts are close to being finished for Season 2 if they aren't already. So that's it for the Q&A. Not a ton of groundbreaking things, although we did get confirmation that Elaine won't be in Season 1. We got some confirmation about channeling and perspective, and we got information about the teaser with the Trollic that accidentally released last week. What do you guys think of Rafe's comments? What about the rest of the news? Does this stuff make you more or less excited about the show? Let me know in the comments of the video. Make sure also to like this video, subscribe to the channel for all Wheel of Time related news, as well as lore content. Check out my Patreon if you'd like to become a supporter of the channel, and make sure to get your VPN through NordVPN in the link in the description. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on a rope of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free, crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?